This lesson is an introduction to shell variables and environment variables. These two are almost the same thing, but there's a small but very important difference. Probably the most well-known environment variable is the one named path. Like most environment variables, it's defined in uppercase. Throughout Linux, you can assume that everything is case sensitive. Anyway, you can use the name of the path environment variable on the echo command like this. And all you get is the name. However, the definition of the variable is stored inside the shell, and you can get the shell to translate it for you by using the special character dollar like this. Now you get the value of the path. The value of path is a list of names of directories. Each directory name is separated from the other directory names by a colon. These are the names of directories where executable programs are stored. Whenever you enter a command in response to a shell prompt, and the shell doesn't know what the command is, it looks through all of these directories for an executable program by the name you entered. That's all the path is for, to locate executable programs that you enter from the command line. As you can see in this example, the first directory is named user s bin. The second one is named dot. Dot is a synonym for the current directory. That means when you enter a command, the shell will look for it starting in user s bin, then in the current directory, and then on to the rest of the directories in order down the list until it finds it, or it doesn't. Now the security folks will tell you that you should not include the dot in your path because that makes it easier for some cracker to attack your system with a Trojan horse. And that's true. But we don't always do what's good for us and I find it very convenient to leave the dot in my path. But you should certainly never put a dot in the path of the root user and you shouldn't use a dot yourself if your system is too public. Another interesting variable is the one named PS1. It describes the content of the command line prompt. I set my prompt to display the login name of the current user and the name of the host computer and the full path name of the current directory. This is because it's so easy for me to forget who I am and where I am. Now here's how it's set. You can look at the prompt itself and see the result of this string when it's interpreted by the shell. The current login name is Arthur. The current computer name is Arlen. The special characters backslash U are translated into the user name and backslash H is the simple name of the current computer. There are lots of these special codes, enough so that you should be able to customize your prompt to be anything you'd like. They can be found on the bash man page this way. Now this is a very large man page, so it's probably easier just to do a search. You can search the man page by entering a slash followed by the string you want to find like this. Now this first entry talks about PS1, but it doesn't show us the information we're looking for. The thing to do is to repeat the search by pressing N for next. You can repeat this until you find exactly what you're looking for. Then you can use the arrow keys to move up and down so you can read the whole section. As you can see, there are lots of options available. Anyway, to get back to the original prompt. You can see that I've included a couple of square brackets and an at sign just for decoration. I also included the pwd command which prints the name of the current directory but I did include it in a special way so it's executed by the shell. If I just named it, it would be the name that showed up like this. What we want is to instruct the shell to execute the command and use the results of that execution. We do that by enclosing it inside a couple of special characters like this. These things are called back 
ticks or grave accent marks. They're the backward single quote characters. I can't guarantee where it's going to be located on your keyboard, but it's often just to the left of the number one and on the same key as the tilde. Whenever you want to get the output of a command, any command, instead of the command name itself, just enclose it in these characters and the shell will execute the command and give you the results. Now the name path is an environment variable because it's defined in the shell and is available to every program that is run by the shell. The name PS1 is a shell variable because it's defined in the shell but it's not made available to every program run by the shell. I'm going to explain this in more detail in the next lesson.